Hello, hello everyone. How's things? I am um, trying to get used to the hot weather here now. Uh, it's um, becoming to be kind of pretty unbearable outside, but uh, we have uh, switched on the air conditioning for the first time this week and we're getting uh, slightly better now. Hello, Major Alvega. Uh, we have uh, this uh, short uh, uh, countdown, so letting things flow and letting people uh, connect as uh, we start doing uh, uh, the show and uh, we um, introduce to the latest news of the week so hello 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 everyone out there so this week is release week for panzer corps axis operation 1945 uh, this is the latest of course in the axis operation series uh, it's not over uh, if you ask, is this going to be the last year of war? Mm, maybe not, maybe not. We're, we've got surprises in this uh, area for you in uh, the near future, but uh, stay tuned. And, uh, you know, because uh, Axe Operations started slightly earlier with the Spanish Civil War uh, DLC, uh, we want to uh, give it breadth and life for uh, the future as well. So expect uh, more after this, but uh, uh, focus on 1945. Uh, there is um, quite a lot of stuff in the game. I mean, it's kind of all the you know the, all that you would expect. Uh, considered it's late in the war, so uh, missions start to be very co more complex and more difficult and more articulated, uh, as you can see from the screenshots as well. You know, there's no easy situation. There's no uh, small forces. You know, everything is bigger and larger than life, and um, so you get expect. A lot of a challenge uh, toward you know with these uh, missions, but also think that uh, this is um, you know a part of the war that uh, we can uh, sort of be more creative with. So uh, Kerensky, in developing this um, new set of scenarios, has tried to sort of go historical uh, as much as he could in terms of you know following the course of the war and um, you know the the end of the. Um, of the of the war towards you know uh, in the both in the west and the east, but also look at alternative scenarios and alternative uh, ways of uh, looking at um, the uh, the specific situation in the war. So imagine that uh, you've got a lot of different options to take uh, your forces forward and um, you know in the future as well. It's um, uh, as always, new game mechanics, uh, new units allow for very specific uh, actions and uh, strategies in game, and make sure that you know you sort of understand that you know in the progress of uh, n of the Axis Operation series, you will see that uh, natural progression. So, if you're a fan of the series, you'll find this level of like small tweaks and interesting new mechanics that you wouldn't have in the first initial. Um, Axe Operation um, DLCs. Uh, if you're new to it, uh, then you'll find some surprisingly new um, new features uh, for for the game. Um, the uh, I'm sorry, this is a pop up in uh, in my my computer here. A hey, yog dog. I hope you're fine. And um, we also have uh, a sale going on for Panzer Corps on. Um, on Steam and on our site, so make sure you check that out. Uh, we've got up to 50% off on the whole series. And um, we uh, have, uh, um, we also have uh, sales going on in many other third-party sites, so check them out and see which one you prefer. Hey, uh, Necrotic Nexus, uh, good to see you back, and um, everyone else in the stream. Also, uh, on Panzer Corps, um, we're now moving towards, you know, the new phase of development of the series um, of the franchise. Uh, many of many of you will ask us, you know, where uh, very specific and uh, where are, you know, where's the updates on uh, the future of the series as well. And we're working towards that. We're also working on com what's coming up next in, uh, you know, as the franchise develops. You know, as you know, this uh, franchise has gone through phases of, you know, ups and downs in terms of, you know, pace of development. Uh, and, you know, a massive, massive thanks to Kransky, who uh, has been instrumental to keeping the franchise up, up and going and fresh and alive and kicking. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're now looking into the future. And uh, so if uh, you're a fan of the series and, you know, of course, you know, Pacific, we know that you guys are out there and waiting for it. But if you've got suggestions on 
what you would like in the game and what you think would make the game better. Um, just, you know, um, switch on, uh, you know, your Discord, switch on your forums and such, and tell us what you think about it, because we're uh, very much looking in, uh, um, forward to uh, hearing your suggestions uh, there. Yuliug, uh, I have, uh, yeah, I was, I was saying uh, earlier on, uh, no, it's not done, uh, Exorpations is not done, so if things are going as we hope with the 1945, which, you know, brings the uh, series forward, but also, you know, follows on on the success of the previous ones, uh, we're looking to, um, to expand on it uh, further. Uh, now, of course, after 1945, everything is a bit um, sci-fi and fantasy, and, uh, and uh, you know, it's not even it's not even what if. It's uh, very much like you know, um, very creative in a way. Uh, but we're definitely looking at uh, l you know, looking at the potential avenues of exploring more Axis operations um, scenarios in the future as well. It's uh, it's definitely something that we're uh, interested to know your opinion about. So um, give us your Give us your frank opinions and also suggestions that we're, um, we're very much looking forward to that. Um, uh, one thing that happened this week, uh, we've st we've st as you know, we've started rolling uh, more um, marketing materials for Terminator, uh, which is coming out, uh, releasing in the last part of the year, uh, in 2023. Uh, if you're uh, uh, not familiar with what we did, just go back on our YouTube channel and you've got all the recordings of the big Terminator event we ran uh, earlier in May, I think it was. Um, I, I think end of May was it. And uh, so we've got quite a lot of covered in terms of gameplay, in terms of the factions, in terms of you know what the game's about and so on. So we started rolling out a bit of you know insights in what we've sort of touched on in uh, the uh, Terminator day or what we call the Terminator live stream we've done in the past. So. Um, y this week was um, a focus on the founders faction. Uh, which basically is this last line of defense against Legion. And we've, we've sort of tried to focus on the infantry units and, you know, and the leader. And there, of course, you've got infantry, infantry units focus with their skills and abilities and, you know, and weaponry and equipment and such. But, you know, and, and more, more of a focus on the figure of Alex Church. Uh, who's the leader of this faction. And it's, it's interesting for me because, you know, we're, we've got, you know, characters and, and, um, and factions with actual names, um, uh, with their stories, with, you know, with a background and such. It's the first time we actually do something that's very narrative driven and, uh, you know, where we focus on very specific characteristics, not only for factions, like you would imagine from a, I don't know, like a Warhammer game and such, but, you know, very much like their story of characters, their, you know, the, the, how they develop toward, you know, within the game and so on. So I'm, I'm look, looking forward to see, you know, what you think about all this and uh, the characters and how they um, populate the Terminator uh, world and uh, how, uh, how it's uh, being developed as well. Uh, because, you know, it's for us um, as a publisher, it's the first time we focus very much into this idea of uh, giving, you know, a lot of more flesh and bones to characters and stories. So, you know, helping us deliver that uh, is um, something that we're, we're looking for that uh, for your help as well. Um, cheers in having tea as well, citrus ecological tea. Something must have fallen and hit my head in the supermarket today. Uh, Beam Slam, um, I, I don't know, I kind of like every kind of tea. Uh, not very much the flavored ones, but the traditional teas, uh, I think I'll, I like them all. So, If you've got suggestions for tea, yeah, just fire off. Fire off. Um, I mean, I'm listening. Hello. Any news about modern novel warfare? Tahuel two. Well, uh, it's interesting times for modern novel warfare, uh, as you probably know. I, I don't. Think, I, th I think we've covered it in uh, one of the past tea times. We've been to Combine Naval Event, uh, one of the biggest professional uh, defense events in the UK, uh, in May. And this was the first time we actually showed uh, to a public of potential professional clients um, the VR uh, capabilities of modern naval warfare. And um, it, was, it was a blast. You know, people really loved the detail. And I have to say that, you know, trying it out myself, uh, I found it, you know, very interesting that 
the actual, you know, VR version of the game is so crisp and clean and detailed. It's almost really like, you know, being in there. And, um, and I, I think that the fact, you know, combine that with the fact that submarines are very much, um, you know, a sensorial experience in a way, you know, they, you know, have got sound that sounds very important and, um, you know, and, 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 you know, how you're immersed in it is very important. The VR capabilities of the game are, are incredible in that sense because, you know, you put your, you put your visor on and your headset on and it's just like, you know, brings you to another, you know, environment really. It's just amazing. Um, as in, you know, when it comes out and all that kind of stuff, uh, which is something that I probably think you're interested in. Uh, the game, uh, Modern Novel, Naval Warfare, will hit beta uh, towards the end of the summer, uh, beginning of um, the f beginning of uh, autumn, and that's when we're s we'll do the final round of tests and you know approach release. So, very probably going to release in 2024. But uh, if you're interested in joining the beta, um, just Watch out because we're going to open that very very soon. Um, I believe uh, Earl Grey. Earl Grey. Well, you got to think that that um, uh, you know, K. Cole. Uh, we're um, the the McNeils are you know, either, you know one one Scottish, one English, and uh, they're very very specific about the tea and how it should be made and so on. So we're we're down here in Italy and we look like, you know. We, we have to do the tea time thing, uh, but we're not the tea experts. So I really like Earl Grey. Um, some, some is more like for something stronger and such, but um, it's um, definitely something we, uh, we can learn from our English uh, friends up there. I wish you would do a Battletech strategy game, Kornak. Uh, I wish uh, a Battletech strategy game. There's quite a lot of interesting Battletech or mech-like type thing out there. So. That's a pretty competitive market, and there's the stuff that's there out there is pretty good. Uh, so it's very hard to compete in that space. Uh, but it gets, uh, it's a nice suggestion there. Um, Mac Warrior, yeah, my favorite. Mac Warrior would be great. Um, but again, you know, uh, Mac stuff is um, is something that's uh, you know very much out there right now, and there's very very good quality stuff. But um, you know, back in the days, you know, Mac Warrior Three was. Uh, Really a great game. I really enjoyed, and I'd, I'd, I'd love to go back to that at some point. Um, on uh, more, um, uh, I wanted to say um, we have on Terminator as well. We've got just published a couple of articles, uh, no, one article uh, on our website. Uh, you know, we've got this new types of articles on the on the website. One of them is called the Insider, which is like, you know, how do we create materials? How do we you know, make games, you know, we involve like informing interviews and entertaining, entertaining, you know, with questions and answers with uh, key people that we um, work with uh, along the way during the development of the games and the marketing materials. So we've interviewed uh, the actress that is who's in the, um, the Terminator videos, Bennett Cousins, and um, the director of the uh, Terminator videos, um, Emanuele Davoli. Um, so these are some of the shots we've got from the uh, actual behind the scenes uh, of the um, of the shooting uh, day days. That's uh, Bennett taking um, instructions, and uh, and the article is really about very much about that. How do we you know how do we film these things and how how it was to do that all that stuff. And uh, I have to say this uh, place we're filmed in uh, is an actual bunker, uh, World War II bunker we have close to Milan. It's a um, place you would not find if um, you know if if you uh, look for it. Uh, you know, you've got like it's very well hidden. Um, uh, well, funnily enough, I was just living very close to the place uh, for quite a long time, and I didn't know about it at all uh, until you know we got to shoot in there. Um, and um, it's a it's a great it's a great way of discovering places. You know, finding these locations and things. But it's also a great experience to sort of. Uh, use them to uh, shoot some sci-fi uh, future content as well. I, I was very excited about it. And we went there for a full day, but the shooting uh, took place for, uh, for I think, 48 hours in total or, or even more. So it was a great experience. And also the fact that, you know, these things have been 
um, you know, very, very well executed. I'm, I'm, you know, the, the quality of what we produced there was amazing. Uh, so big props to uh, the director, Emanuele Davoli, and um, Bennett, uh, also to uh, our team here, um, Julia and Enzo, for uh, doing an incredible job at putting that together. Um, nice lighting, yeah, yeah, nice lighting, uh, David. But also, I think the the overall atmosphere that was created within these, you know, um, uh, bunkers was was amazing, you know, and 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 um, I, th I, th I think just like being there, watching the the shooting was was just great. Um, right now, next week uh, we've got the release of um, just changing subject completely. Uh, Strategic Command, uh, American Civil War. Uh, free DLC uh, releasing next week. Uh, the free DLC is called 1904 Imperial Sunrise. It covers the Sino-Japanese War. Um, so it's a weird mix and match. It's American Civil War, but you've got like the, uh, the, the, the other side of the world um, war happening in uh, 1904. Um, it's, um, I think it's, you're gonna see more of these uh, DLCs uh, in, in either you know paid for form or free form uh, but for strategic command because what we're seeing is that there's a lot of engagement whoever, whoever owns the game or strategic command who's a fan of the game really likes you know new experiences in there and um, delivering these in official form instead of um, just like supporting modding um, it's like a good parallel way of you know keeping uh, you guys engaged and I think we've you know you've showed us that it's incredible uh, how many people are actually playing, downloading and playing these DLCs, you know, if you compare it with the number of people who actually own the full game. So um, be prepared for some um, Far Eastern, um, you know, conflicts there. Um, and it's, um, it's something that I look forward to next week. Um, I have to say, um, okay, last week, we sh we've, last week we've run a promotion for the game. Also, be prepared for the fact that um, from next week onwards, we've got the sale, the summer sale as well. So the Steam summer sale, official su Steam summer sale. So all of these games, all of our games mainly, or basically all of our games, are going to be on sale for um, for um, the whole week. Uh, I think f until the sixth of July. But Julia can be uh, can correct me there if I'm wrong. Um, so that's for for strategic command. Uh, last week there was also the big event, uh, Starship Troopers uh, anniversary. It was an, a, a great event. Um, I think that number of players who downloaded or replayed the game because the achievement has been really, really high. Um, I'm very pleased about uh, that because you know it's been a year since we've sort of released the game, and the many people who actually bought the game on day one go, went back to the game to you know unlock the achievements and such. It was a great experience to see them uh, you know go back to the game. Uh, so massively, uh, we also ran a promotion. Who's uh, the, I think the promotion is ending in a couple of hours' time, so you still have time to get the game at a massive thirty percent discount. Uh, I'm just trying to. I'll, I'll just read the chat in a second, uh, guys. Sorry. Um, a big also thanks to uh, a few streamers who massively support the game: um, Angry Joe, uh, Boken, Potato Whiskey. Potato Mac whiskey, sorry, and uh, also Tudi Kiri, who's going to play the game next uh, week on, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on Tuesday or Monday or Tuesday. Um, so check out uh, her um, streaming schedule, uh, 2D Kiri with a K. She's great. Um, she's she's a fantastic uh, player, and she supports our games massively. So I'm I'm very happy about that. Whiskey's fine too. Ah, uh, okay. But I like the potatoes part as well. So, um, uh, but thanks for supporting. Uh, thanks for supporting. Uh, it's uh, it's good to see. What we found out this week, um, and this is unrelated, uh, but uh, Bokane uh, was playing Sashi Troopers uh, as a you know a sponsored event, and uh, just for fun he played ICBM. Um, I think like three or four hours, something like that. You know, I like a session or more sessions of ICBM. And incredibly, you know, a lot of people uh, that didn't know at anything about ICBM just went on the ICBM page and, you know, discovered the game. So it, it's, I have to say that the relevance of 
you know, good creators, people who support the game, know the games, understand how to play them, understand, you know, how to show them to their audience. And when they do it well, uh, it just changes the game completely in terms of awareness and, and, you know, you might end up, not end up with a sale, but, you know, the number of people who are actually uh, getting to know the games is massive. So I'm not, I'm not saying something completely new, but I, I think that it's really relevant to the, fa the fact that these guys that I'm naming, but, you know, the, you know you, you've got a lot in the chat now, Edmund, Yogdog, Das Tactic, and, you know, all the people who really, uh, Hexabu and Richard York and, and all the, these guys who really support and know what they're talking about, they really have the ability to, you know, to bring the games to a whole new audience. So massive, massive thanks to you guys. You know, it's like, you know, um, it's not even the tip of the iceberg. It's like the mass of, you know, how we can make sure that these games are are um, reaching a big audience. So, um, you know, it's just a, not a thank you just for the sake of it. It's really, you know, a real um, heartfelt um, uh, thank you uh, to you guys. Marcos said, I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to get that comment framed and put on my wall. Um... Gosh, you've got your you've got your wall you're covered with uh, my my quotes now. Um, I'll um, but I'll, I'll I'll want a picture of your wall with all these quotes now. Uh, I'll give you a, the summer after the summer. We invite you on stage and you bring us a picture of your wall with all the quotes uh, I made. Um, Talking about streamers, we've got uh, a big event coming. Uh, Enzo and uh, Paolo are going up to um, um, TwitchCon uh, up in Paris this year. Uh, TwitchCon Europe, of course. Um, the event, the major event for uh, Twitch streamers and uh, any, anything related to Twitch. Uh, it's uh, going to be next, uh, not next week. Um, so if uh, uh, you guys out there are going, uh, reach out to Paolo and Enzo for a nice offer beer offered by Slytherin. Well, reimbursed by Slytherin, of course, because, you know, we've got to be careful about that. Questions there? Yogg Dog, you're not, you're not doing um, TwitchCon. We've got more shows coming in, uh, in the UK, though. Uh, I think we've confirmed uh, the attendance to a new um, WASD event, WSD event, that's going to happen in September. And we've also confirmed, uh, uh, we're also going to confirm, not 100% sure, but uh, we're probably going to confirm an attendance to EGX uh, in October. So September, October, Yogg you'll have plenty of opportunities to come and see us at our stand um, somewhere in London. I don't know exactly where these things are going to happen, but uh, uh, we'll make sure that we... We get you covered on that. Man, I lost the internet for like 30 seconds there. Edmund, don't worry, I'll send you an email about that. Um, massive 4% sale. I said 30% sales. Beams lamb. I did say 4%. 30% is massive on, on, a, on a price of 29.99. It's not that bad. But I can be wrong. I can be wrong. Uh, well, we can, we can wait. You can wait until the sale is even massive -er and uh, or the massivest who knows I don't know English enough so who knows um, we are also talking about streamers uh, I'm going to give you the list uh, the schedule the stream schedule for uh, this um, coming week so after this I believe it's Edmund playing Panzer Corps Axe Operation 8 1945. Is it you, Edmund? Is your internet working? Who knows? It's better than 3%, of course. 5% robust. See, what? okay, give me a price that's going to be cheap enough for you to buy Starship Troopers. Now, if you tell me $1, you're going to wait until, you know, the end of the life cycle when we do a free-to-keep on Steam. Uh, tomorrow, we have, uh, at 6 p.m., we have Richard York playing Field of Glory 2. We've got, I think it's a Dean battled, battle um, stream. 
uh, on at 8 p.m. We have Yog Dog playing Orcs, Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector Orcs. Sorry, I'm gonna be specific there because there's, there's three Warhammer games, so it could be anything. Um, at 10 p.m., uh, if you were fancy uh, some later night uh, streams, we've got Das Tacting playing Master of Magic. Humble bundle for one dollar, toothless shark. Wait for that. We're gonna mi we're gonna fix that soon. Um, and then on Monday next week, we've got a big Matrix Monday. So we have Yog Dog playing Flashpoint campaign Southern Storm at four fifteen. Then we have Hexaboo uh, playing your favorite uh, version of Excel, Rule the Waves three at six fifteen, and. Uh, uh, XTRG playing uh, uh, Strategic Command, American Civil War, 1904 Imperial Sunrise. And by the time he's read the title, the stream is going to be over, but it's going to be at 8.15. So there's a big, massive uh, Matrix Monday next week. Uh, bear in mind that next week uh, it's also the release of uh, Strategic Command DLC, so we've got quite a lot of Strategic Command stuff happening, and next week we've got the, the big Steam Summer Sale happening. Slytherin Humble Bundle confirmed. Uh, Major, uh, yes, in a sense. I mean, we've, we've done Slytherin Humble's bundles in the past. We've done like publisher bundles. We've done uh, publisher sales. And we've done also sort of single games being part of bundles. Uh, I have to say, they're usually very, very useful uh, to get new attention on games and such. So um, yeah, it's not impossible that something is gonna come uh, on Humble very, very soon. Neil Stevens is uh, loving uh, Rule the Waves 3 at the moment, like many other players. Uh, another big massive thank you to anyone who's uh, bought Rule the Waves and left uh, a positive review. We've got, I think, 96 or 95% positive reviews on the game, and um, it's officially the best-selling uh, uh, war game of the year so far for us. So massive thank you there. Massive thank you to the great guys at um, NWS who developed a fantastic game. Merchandise, merc bro mercenaries. Gosh, that's getting too hard for me. Um, oh, bro mercenaries coming out on the 14th. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm going to be asking around, or you can explain to me. I don't know. Um, also, I mean, the, uh, a couple of more updates I want to give you. Um, we've got uh, a few of the you know, very important dates that uh, we said to you in the past, and I want to make sure that you, um, uh, you know, we update you about. Uh, Stargate, um, so st you guys, uh, you know, have all heard that uh, Stargate was going to release um, before, you know, during the summer. We're, work we're working on it. Uh, we don't have a date yet. Uh, we're also working on delivering a great experience, and uh, we've seen many um, recent examples of um, IPs, uh, of famous uh, movie IPs or TV IPs, with you know released with you know some issue or some sort of, of issue that, and and uh, you know we've got a history of delivering games such as Battlestar Galactica and Starship Troopers in the past, and they've always been received as this is the best possible experience based on the IP you've got. Um, and we want to stick to that mission. Um, so Stargate is not uh, something we're going to you know, take uh, lightly. And we know that we have to deliver a game that's really cool. So we're going to update you about the developments on, on, on the game. Uh, our intention is to release it as soon as we can, but also you know, to have good quality. So that is a uh, something that, um, like an answer, uh, a release date that we owe you um, as a, you know, as an answer, but uh, we'll soon update you about it. And the other big uh, question we've got, or, you know, another big um, element that's missing uh, from the conversation is, of course, Broken Arrow. Uh, Broken Arrow, we are uh, currently looking at all the multiplayer um, capabilities of the game. Um, as you know, you know, you just just go on Steam. Uh, Broken Arrow is on the top ten of the most anticipated strategy games of the year, or you know, st most anticipated anticipated strategy games, 
you know, on Steam uh, in general. Uh, so, of course, the idea is that uh, when we launch the game, we'll have a lot of people playing the game, um, a lot of people playing multiplayer. And as you know, it's the first time that we uh, deliver an RTS of um, this um, level order of magnitude. And again, we want to make sure that nothing's broken when we release it. Nothing, you know, we've seen a lot of games, games fail because, you know, multiplayer wasn't working on day one. So uh, we've been around the industry for long enough to say that this is an important thing if you want a game to succeed. So we'll make sure that uh, we update you on that. We are uh, looking at all the different possibilities there. When we announced Broken Arrow, we, we didn't expect to have the hundreds, like literally the hundreds of thousands of potential players on day one. And, um, and so it's important for us that we can deal with these masses of players. So uh, it's another game that we're technically looking at very, very carefully, and we'll update you on that very soon. Is it going to be a real fight for my time between Broken Arrow and Terminator? Ah, uh, you got a 50-50. Well, whatever, you know, um, you've, you've, got, um, you've got in your... Uh, in your time in terms of what's left to stream but definitely you know i think like my my personal um i'm 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 more like into the terminator type of of, of rts where there's a bit more um i don't know like the, i like the idea of the story and uh, and the progression of the story uh but you know definitely broken arrow is uh, is a game that um has uh, all the all the ingredients to be very very successful Take the time to release a polished product. Yeah, I mean, uh, Major Swifty, I think that it's not something that we take lightly, but also the fact that, you know, we're, we're, we've got to sort of make sure that our number one priority is that these games are successful and the developers making these games are successful. And um, for a publisher like us, you know, it's we've got like five releases or like three, four, five big releases a year. Uh, for a developer who develops these games, uh, it's their one release for you know for a long time because they've been de doing these things for three, four, five, six years. So it's not all about us. It's really about them and the ability to be successful and us giving the right advice to them and also you know the players. Uh, you know they they get some, they buy something that that works and it's enjoyable. So um, very much like um, our. You know, whatever we do, we try to sort of fulfill these two um, promises. And uh, I think, I mean, Supreme Commander 3 would also be great. Or some Battle Isles game again. Uh, Supreme Commander 3 would be great. Uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, but there's, there's many games. I think that overall, I mean, our catalog, our, our you know, mix uh, coming up game, uh, the, our games that we announced and uh, we haven't announced, is very, it's very varied right now. Um, there's... A lot to be uh, announced in terms of war games as well uh, on the Matrix side of things. In September, uh, we're going to run a big war game, Homo War Gamers event, where we're going to unveil some of the big war games we've got um, cooking for you. So uh, there's quite a lot of stuff that we haven't announced yet, and that's uh, pretty exciting. And the stuff maybe that we have officially announced, but you guys know it's hap are there happening, but we're gonna we want to show you uh, in the future. So um, stay tuned on that. We'll, we'll look forward to that. So um, I will uh, see you next week. And um, make sure that you go and try Panzer Corps uh, AO 1945 and take advantage of the massive discounts we've got on Panzer Corps this week and on all the games we've got uh, next week at the summer um, sale on Steam. I will see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>
see you on the other side.